This is a Motorola 68K computer that I've been building. The entire computer is built as a series of cards that plug into a backplane. So this is the backplane PCB. You can see there are several cards that plug into the backplane. So the first card is the CPU card. It has the CPU on it, it has the clock on it, it has the interrupt controller circuit on it, uh, it has the address decoders, and it has a optional phase lock loop circuit up here. The next card is the memory card, and the memory card contains a series of bus buffers and it has three banks, and each bank is one megabyte. The first bank is flash memory, and the two banks are RAM banks. And right now only the first bank of RAM is populated. So right now it has one megabyte of RAM and also one megabyte of flash. And the flash contains the operating system. And the last card is the IO card. And this card contains a number of IO circuits. Most importantly, there's a PS2 receiver which is built using shift registers. There's also a PS2 transmitter, which allows communication with a SD card. And it also has a sequencer for the SPI. So the CPU can write a byte of data to the SPI output port and the, uh, the sequencer will automatically send that byte to the SD card and read back the data coming from the SD card. It also has a GPIO port, as well as an optional real-time clock up here, which is not currently populated. And also the GPIO is used to bitbang output back to the PS2 keyboard. And lastly in the back I have a video card. And this video card can do 80 by 60 text mode, whereas in each character is 8 by 8 pixels and can have 8 foreground and 8 background colors per character. Uh, this card I originally designed for a Z80 computer, not a 68K computer, so it has a 8-bit data bus and so the 68K only has a 50% throughput to the VRAM on this card. So I've been programming a multitasking operating system for the computer. The computer has no memory management unit, so all code is loaded to a dynamic address when the code is run. And so in order to accomplish that, all code is compiled using the position independent code in the GCC compiler. And so this does give a slight performance penalty, and it sometimes does require global offset tables that need to be configured by the operating system you can see the LEDs on the keyboard up here flash when the computer is turned on. And when the computer starts up, it starts up in the, basically the, what is supposed to be the kernel. And uh, the kernel basically shows you the currently running processes that are loaded in memory. And right now it's also showing some debug information on the screen. So you can't do anything from the kernel. So the only option is to launch the shell. So once you enter the shell, it loads the shell executable into memory and runs it. And from the shell executable, you can navigate the data on the SD card and you can go through the folders on the SD card. From the shell, you can also run other executable programs. So for example, here I have Game of Life. And this is again, this is basically 80 by 60 characters using block characters for pixels. Now the operating system has multitasking. So both the shell and the Game of Life program are loaded into memory. 
So I can switch between them by pressing the uh, OS key on the keyboard. This returns me back to the kernel. And in the kernel, I can go back and re-enter the shell program, for example, if I want to. And if I want to, I can launch a second instance of the Game of Life program. And then again, if I want to, I can go back to the original program. So in this way, you can switch between the currently running programs in the operating system. You can also use the kernel to shut down a particular process, but this is currently broken, so I'm not going to do that. And of course, if you want to, you can also launch a second instance of the shell. So for example, this instance is in, let's say, this folder, but I can have the other instance of the shell be in the root folder. Now, technically, this computer could support multiple SD cards if it wanted to, but currently it would have to wire up a second chip select line for it to support two disks.